Hey friends, it's Laurie. I'm so happy you stopped by today. I'm making a no mesh coastal wreath and I used mostly Dollar Tree supplies. It will definitely bring a little sun and surf into your summer home. I really hope you like it and enjoy crafting with me. So let's get busy. I'm starting with an 18 inch grapevine wreath and I picked mine up at Michael's. For the wreath's base, I'm using 10 of the soft green and white hydrangeas. And I'm also using five more bunches of the plain white and all my flowers came from the Dollar Tree. I'm not adding the flowers on in one big bunch, so I'm cutting each away from the main stem. As I was cutting them, I made sure to leave the stems long enough to tuck in between the grapevine wreath. Now that I have all my flowers cut, I'm going to start by adding on the green and white hydrangeas. I want to add them evenly around the wreath, so I'm starting by adding one on the inside and then one on the outside, and then just following that pattern as I work my way around. As I'm adding them on, I'm trying to keep just about the same spacing between each flower. I'm also tucking the stems down as tightly as I can so they pretty much won't move out of place. Now that I've made my way completely around, I'm using my extra flowers and filling in the open spaces. And once again, doing my best to evenly space them around the wreath. These are the colors that I chose for my wreath, but there are so many pretty coastal colors out there. Definitely pick your favorite and make it your own. With all my green and white hydrangeas attached, I'm now going to add on the white. To add these, I didn't really have a plan. I just started working my way around the wreath and tucking them in in all the empty spaces. As I was attaching them, I did my best to keep the rounded shape on the outside and the inside of the wreath. Now that I'm done, I absolutely love the way that it looks, but there are a few flowers that don't feel like they're tucked in tight enough, so I'm going to use my hot glue gun and just add a little hot glue on the bottom. This wreath is so pretty, I think you could add on a bow or even hang it as is. But because I'm making mine a coastal wreath, I'm adding on a sign and a few more accents. If you're new to my channel, please consider clicking on that little red subscribe button below, tapping on the bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And to all my returning friends, you're very special to me and I'm so happy you're here. I'm adding on some of this pretty aqua blue tool that I picked up at Michael's. I'll be using it on my sign and I thought this was a great way to incorporate it into the wreath. I'm gathering one end of the tool and I'm tucking it down in between the grapevine wreath using my scissors. Then to make sure that it stays in place, I'm just adding on a little hot glue. With that in place, I then tucked about six inches or so of the tool loosely in between the flowers. I'm once again using my scissors to tuck the end down into my grapevine wreath, then following it up with some hot glue. To add my next section of tool, I'm first measuring it against the first to get my length, tucking it in between the flowers, and then pushing it into the grapevine wreath with my scissors. To hold it in place, I'm then following up with some hot glue. Now that I'm done, I'm just following the same instructions for the rest of my wreath, measuring the tool, tucking it between the flowers, 
pushing it into place with my scissors and then following it up with some hot glue. Adding the tool in is completely optional and you can always omit this step. I'm using the same tool on my sign, so I thought this was a great way to visually link the two together. Now that I'm done, it has that little hint of the aqua blue. For my next accent, I'm using some of the cotton nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. I'm adding it by pretty much mimicking the tool I'm first adding a dot of hot glue next to it and attaching the end. This time, instead of measuring it like I did the tool, I'm adding about four inch loops between the flowers. Once I have their placement, I attach them with my glue gun. Once again, I continued doing this, working my way around the wreath and I'll be adding the same nautical rope accent onto my sign. I'm using the whiter cotton rope for this project, but you can always use the brown nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. That will work great too. Now that I've come to the end, I cut my rope and attach it next to the rope where I began. For my next accent, I'm using some of this open weave ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I'm making four bows using my bow maker and I picked this up a while back on Amazon. I'll be attaching my bows together using a piece of floral wire and I just cut it into four small pieces. I'm making my bows with two four inch tails and two three and a half inch loops. I wrapped my floral wire around the center, pulled it tightly, and then twisted it in the back. After my first one was complete, I then made three more. Before attaching them to the wreath, I'm using my clippers to remove the excess wire on the backs. Adding them to the wreath, I'm placing one on the bottom and one on the top across from each other, and then doing the same on both sides. Happy with their placement? I'm then attaching them with my glue gun. When I was done, I then opened the loops, flattened the tails, and I'm going to place this to the side. To make my sign, I'm using this Take Me to the Ocean sign. It's from the Dollar Tree, and I only want the words, the ocean, so I'm detaching it from the boat. For the base of my sign, I'm using a piece of wood that I picked up in the craft department at the Dollar Tree, and it measures five and a half by 11 inches. If you aren't able to find this, you can always use the back of a Dollar Tree sign or even a piece of cardboard. I'm going to be wrapping the wood and I'm using some of the coastal burlap from the Dollar Tree. Mine has the starfish design. It's rolled together pretty tightly, so once you open it up, you'll see fold marks. I'm using my iron and I'm just pressing it out flat. I'm wrapping the wood, so I'm placing it down, making sure that I have enough edge on all four sides. Once I do, I'm then cutting it out with my scissors. I turned the burlap over and centered the wood, and then using my glue gun, I just ran a line on the top. 
I then folded the fabric over and attached it in place. I let it set up for a minute and then I followed the same instructions for the bottom. The hot glue will seep through the fibers of the burlap so I did use my finger protector to help hold it in place. For the sides, I once again added on some hot glue and then folded the burlap over to give myself two neat ends. To give my sign a finished edge, I'm using some of the white cotton nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. I'm using a piece that I had left over from another project and I made sure that it was long enough to wrap around my sign. I'm once again using my glue gun and adding some to the outside edges of my sign and attaching the rope. As I was attaching it, I did start by having one of the ends of the rope slightly hang over the corner edge. I also did place it on a piece of waxed paper to help prevent it from sticking to my work surface. To finish up, I cut my rope so that it would sit flush with the corner piece and then attached it. I picked up this set of three wooden mermaid tails from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be using two of them. I cut two away from the jute hanger and I'm going to be painting them with my white acrylic paint. I want those pretty scales to show through so I'm giving it more of a white wash. I just added some of my white acrylic paint into a bit of water. I then gave the two top halves of the tails a coat. I'm wrapping the bottom of the tails, but I don't want any of that natural wood color to show through, so I'm giving them both a coat of this pretty aqua acrylic paint. I chose this color because it's very close to the color of tool that I'll be using. To wrap my tails, I'm using some of this pretty aqua blue tool and you can pick this up at Michael's. To start wrapping the tails, I'm first bunching the end of the tool up and attaching it on the back with my glue gun. I let it set up for about a minute and now I have my tool folded in about three folds or so. I'm wrapping it around the front and then up under the tail. I'm making sure to keep the same tension on the tool as I'm wrapping it around. When I come to the end, I wrap it around the point and I'm giving myself an extra inch or so of tool so that I can hot glue it onto the back. I really like how the tool is giving another layer to the mermaid tails and ultimately to my sign, but this step is completely optional. You can always just leave them painted. For the other side of the mermaid tail, I followed the exact same instructions. The only difference this time is that I went directly under the mermaid tail and started wrapping it. When I came to the end, I wrapped the tool into a point and then hot glued the end on the back. With both of my mermaid tails complete, it's now time to add them onto the sign. Before I permanently attach all my pieces together, I first like to find their placement. I first centered the ocean sign and then added on the two mermaid tails. Then using my glue gun, I attached them all in place. I'm 
I'm giving each mermaid tail two bows and I'm starting with some white tulle from the Dollar Tree. I made two small simple bows and I cut the tails at two inches. To attach them, I'm placing a dot of hot glue onto the tulle on each tail. To add to my two white tulle bows, I'm using some of the Dollar Tree jute. I doubled it up, made a simple bow, and cut the tails off at two inches. I made two of these and I'm attaching one on the top of each white tulle bow. For my final accent, I'm using three of these wooden fish pins from the Dollar Tree. They're attached to clothes pins. I removed the top one, but I left the bottom. The reason I'm leaving one on the back is so when I place it on the sign, it will raise it up just a bit. As always, I first like to find their placement, and once I'm happy, I'm then hot gluing them. With my sign complete, it's now time to add it onto the wreath. I'm recycling one of the Dollar Tree wooden stakes, and you can pretty much use any type of wood for this part of the project, just making sure that it stretches across the wreath. I slipped it into the center of the wreath, hiding it under the flowers, and then on both sides, I attached it with my hot glue. I now have a base for my sign and I'm attaching it on with some hot glue. For the final accents, and can you believe we're almost at the end, I'm placing on some starfish. I'm using four of these white starfish and I found these at the Dollar Tree. I found the exact same size at the Christmas tree shop and these are in a more natural off-white color. The best part for me using these starfish is that they are man-made. If you only find the white or the off-white, you can always paint them the opposite colors. I'm first adding my white starfish, placing one in the center of each bow. I'm now centering the off-white starfish in between the white. To finish up, I'm now hot gluing them in place. I usually hang my wreath from the original grapevine wreath, but if you want to add a hanger, just twist together a piece of floral wire and add it onto the back. Now that I'm done, this pretty coastal wreath will make the perfect addition to your summer home. Here we are at the end of the video and I really hope you enjoyed making this coastal wreath with me. If you had fun and you think you'd like to come back and hang out with me again, don't forget to click that little red subscribe button below. You can also tap on the bell and that will notify you every time I upload a new video. If you're looking for more home decor ideas, I have a bunch of them and I will link those playlists at the end of this video. I hope you all have a safe and amazing day and I will see you soon. Bye everybody!